Right, welcome back to another episode of the GCN Tech Clinic, where I try and solve your bike related problems. So if you've got one, make sure you leave it for me down there in the comment section below, or alternatively, on all forms of social media. Now, no further ado, let's crack on with the first question this week. It comes in from METT. Emmy says, I've got a question. Uh, I have a Dura Ace 9100 crank set, and I would like to send the left crank to the factory to install a power meter. Can I put the XT8000 from my mountain bike on it so I can still do indoor training? The crank length is the same, 170 millimeters. Uh, yeah, you could put it on there, Emmy. The problem with this though, what you're gonna get is a wider stance or a wider Q factor. So uh, a mountain bike crank generally tends to pop out slightly more to the side of the frame than a road one does. So if you're a fussy so-and-so like me, you are gonna notice those little discrepancies. I don't know exactly how many millimeters it's gonna be, but the reason I wouldn't want to do it is it could lead to an injury or something like that. What you could do though, is have a look around on something like eBay and try and buy a single left-hand crank just to use temporarily. Uh, people quite often destroy one or the other, so they send a lot, sell off one of the other ones quite cheap. So that's what I would do. Have a look, try and get one as a temporary measure, and then, well, sell it on once you're done with it. Next up, we've got Kerry Lyman Lopez, who says, hey John, love the show. As always, two questions. Always two questions, doesn't have to be. Anyway, right, let's tackle your questions though. Uh, I'm planning to upgrade my bike with an Ultegra 6700 10-speed gear set, but the rear derailleur cage is short. I use a cyclocross stroke gravel bike and tend to use a bigger cassette, 40 to 42 teeth, to tackle every terrain. Will the new GRX 10-speed rear derailleur work with it? Uh, secondly, I'm using mechanically actuated uh, cable-pulled hydraulic brake calipers, but it seems to feel weak and doesn't bite in the rotors that much. Other people told me to put the pads in flames to burn the oil embedded to them. Any thoughts? Right, first up, uh, regarding the rear derailleur, yeah, it will work fine with the 6700 levers there. The thing it won't do, though, is work with a 40 or 42 tooth cassette. Pretty sure that cassette can only handle up to a 36 tooth uh, maximum rear sprocket on there. But what you could do is buy that rear rear, uh, rear derailleur, then add on a derailleur hanger extender. That way you're gonna get a few more teeth out of it and it should be absolutely fine. As for your other question about putting the, flame, uh, the pads in flames, probably wouldn't recommend doing that. Certainly not as a last, well, I'd probably say do it as a last resort really. I do know people who get a blowtorch and go over them just to try and burn off that bits of oil. But I would go out first of all, and just do some sudden braking. Uh, you know, make sure you're on a nice quiet road or quiet stretch of gravel, whatever your your you know your preference is to do it. And just do say 10 really hard uh, pulls on the brakes from a speed of say 20 miles an hour, almost down to walking speed, and then back up again. Just try and do that, just to try and get them to bed in, and hopefully it'll be okay. Right next up, we've got Dennis, who says they've got themselves a 2010 SRAM Red group set. Recently, on occasions when Dennis tries to shift, the rear derailleur does not respond. Keep shifting, and eventually it will finally change gears. It doesn't have this issue every ride. However, it can go for a week shifting fine, then it reoccurs. Does that sound like a cable issue or something completely different? Right, Dennis, sounds to me like you've either got problems with the ratchets or the cables. The first thing I would do is replace the cables to see if they're frayed inside or anything like that. Sometimes a new, fresh cable can make a world of difference. Uh, also, are you doing something different when you're out on your rides but not quite realising that you're doing it? Uh, maybe you're pulling back on the lever slightly and in turn the ratchets aren't engaging correctly. Um, okay, so you are going to take out those cables, you're going to put some new ones in. I hope you follow that. Then I would get an air hose or something similar and blast in some air in there. Sometimes you can get some grit, sand, road debris, stuff like that. Just go inside of the uh, ratchets and the springs and it can just gunk up a little bit. That, that may well free something up. Uh, other than that, the internals and the ratchets, I'm pretty sure on those SRAM levers can actually be bought as spare parts and they can all be replaced. Next up is a question from Rice Vittorio, who says, Hi John, uh, can I combine one oval chain ring with a regular round one, like an oval big ring, and a round small ring, and vice versa? Thanks, love the show. Uh, you can, but generally it's not going to give you very good shifting. You're going to have to take real care, uh, because you're asking it to quite often jump a bigger distance or drop a bigger distance than normal. People out there do do it, um, so you could well just give it a go to start with and see how you get on with it, but just be aware that the front changes are gonna be a little bit slower. 
Carl Kumar is next, who says, John, I've got a large collection of bikes like yourself and heard that Campagnolo, Shimano and SRAM 11 speaker sets are so close together that the indexing spacing is compatible. Do you know any info on this? Yeah, that is absolutely true. Well, not strictly, but uh, the spacing between the sprockets on Shimano and SRAM are identical and Campagnolo is just 0.1 millimeter different on top of that. So. It will work okay, but you've just got to bear in mind that if you're using Campagnolo and you've got it indexed for Shimano or vice versa, uh, as you go up through the cassette, each time you're going to be adding on 0.1 millimeter, you know, difference really. So the tolerances are going to vary by a total of one millimeter. It doesn't sound a lot, but we're dealing with really small numbers down there. Luckily though, on almost all upper pulley wheels, there's a little bit of floats that can take out any discrepancy in the indexing. But yeah, I've done it. I've used all of those different cassettes using a Shimano group set and it's worked fine. Now we've got Noah Mills who says, John, great show. I have recently changed my chain rings for a compact pair. Uh, I'm currently having problems with a couple of strange clicks and noises. The main problem is that when I adjust the front derailleur cable tension to where the front shifts properly, I'm unable to back the set screw off enough so that the chain doesn't rub on the derailleur. It's as though there is suddenly not enough travel in the front neck. This is on a Durace 9000 cranks with Rotor 3D. Any ideas? Whew, right, okay, so uh, it sounds to me like you really do actually need to work more on that cable tension. So I don't know if you've got one fitted already, but try and fit an inline barrel adjuster that goes in between two bits of the front neck cable, outer cable, then you can really fine tune that. Now you're saying you're using the Durace 9000 uh, rings with the Rotor 3D cranks. I'm not sure what group set you've got on there, but say if you had the 9100 group set, those uh, chain rings are spaced 0.4 mil differently. So the inner ring is 0.4 mil inward uh, compared to the 9000, but I don't really know exactly what you've got set up on there because you haven't let me know, have you? Uh, but personally what I'd do is put one of those inline barrel adjusters on, have a hard reset of the front derailleur, right? So take out the cable and just adjust the limit screw. So, uh, you know, doing it as you would do when you set it up. Sometimes you're trying to play around with something and the problem could be more obvious than what you initially think, if that makes sense. So I'd just have a hard reset and go from there. Don't forget though, that inline barrel adjuster, they are a lifesaver. Now we've got Danilo Demero who says, hi John, love the tech channel and everything I learn here. I've repurposed an old road bike of mine from 2009 with Shimano Tiagra for my sister. The problem is she's only 10 and has quite small hands. I've adjusted the lever reach so she's able to brake correctly. However, the tilt necessary to shift the front shifter is too big for her to be able to do whilst riding and she's struggling to push the lever hard enough to shift. Can you help me with this? Thanks and cheers. Do you know what, Danilo, this is a really common problem actually there uh, with people with smaller hands, particularly children. Uh, the reason being that generation of uh, Shimano, the cable routing, it was pretty good, I've got to say, but the action was pretty hard. Exactly what your sister there is, is uh, encountering. So something else you could, could, could consider, let me try and get my words out, is to put a bar in shifter in the end of the handlebar. Uh, a mountain bike shifter, if that fits. Uh, there's also a solution which you're not gonna wanna hear, especially not for a 10 year old, and that's DI2. The electronic buttons, of course, you just press it, and it does all the hard work for you. Um, so that's you know two options, and there's a third sort of quite expensive one for you there. Uh, but yeah, the latest generation, like I've already mentioned, is much lighter in action. It really does make it oh so simple. But yeah, bar and shifter, or maybe a mountain bike shifter, that could well be the option. Failing that, even a down tube shifter, you can still get those. Next up is Wei Seng Lui, who says, Hi John, love the GCN Tech Show. I'm from Adelaide. I have a question for you. Can I use Shimano Altegra 8070 hydraulic shifters with SRAM hydraulic rim brakes? And I'm using mineral oil fluid. No, you can't. Shimano is designed for mineral fluid and SRAM uses dot fluid, I'm afraid. So they're not really cross compatible because the systems just aren't going to work and the seals will leak and you won't get good braking. Adelaide, hey, if I pop out the Tour Down Under this year, or next year even, make sure you bring me some macadamia nuts, my favorite. Now we've got Francois Rouvier who says, hi John, uh, every time I switch my bike from the direct drive trainer to my wheel, I need to readjust the derailleur indexing. I'm using 10-speed Shimano CS5700 cassette on both the trainer and the wheel. Is this normal? Could it be that I have the incorrect number or amount of shims on the trainer? Right, it could be actually that your cassettes are worn at a different rate, therefore affecting the actual indexing and everything. Also, it could well be the overlock nut distance on the 
uh, the trainer and also the wheel are very, very slightly different. So you could measure that and put a shim on one of them to try and get them the same distance. Uh, also, something to consider here is when you actually lock up the rear derailleur skewer, oh, sorry, the rear wheel skewer, what was I thinking, rear derailleur, rear wheel skewer, that you use roughly the same amount of tension. When you tighten a, a skewer, if you watch the rear mech hanger, they nearly always bend, in, bend inwards. So therefore, whenever I index my gears, you always do it with the wheel at the correct tension inside of the frame so that you've got the derailleur hanger just slightly bent if it does go inwards. Alternatively, you get yourself a CNC machine one. They tend to be just a little bit stiffer than the standard cast ones. And the final question this week comes in from Stuart Friedman, who says, Hi John, I'm running an Ultegra 11-speed mechanical on my road bike. When I'm in the large chain ring and any of the three smallest cogs, the front derailleur rubs very slightly. Now, I can silence it by holding the brake lever inwards, but obviously this is not practical. Uh, my question, should I tighten up on the barrel adjuster or dial out on the derailleur, or both? Right, sounds to me like the front mech screws are absolutely fine because it does move over into that position if you need it. So if you've got a barrel adjuster on there, which you do, just actually unscrew it because then you're going to be adding more tension into it because you're sort of putting the two outer cables apart from one another. Give that maybe even a few turns. Start though with half a turn and see what difference that makes because generally that's going to take up the slack in the cable which seems to have stretched or embedded in position a little bit more. Uh, failing that, if that doesn't work or if there's not enough thread on the, the barrel adjuster, so you've already sort of stretched it all out. Wind it all the way back in, put the chain onto the small chain ring and just pull through with a pair of pliers and then just gently tighten up the, uh, the, the cable again into the front derailleur mount. Of course, you are gonna need to undo it, first of all. I don't think I said that, but hopefully you would have done that anyway. Right, there we are, another tech clinic done and dusted. Let me know if you've got a problem down there in the comments section below and I'll do my very best to help answer it in a future episode. Remember as well to like and share this video with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and also click that little notification bell so you get alerted each and every time we put a video live. Remember to check out the GCN shop at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com and now for two more great videos, how about clicking just down here and just down here.